vlog. Do you guys like my face? Um, yeah, so it's like pouring down rain outside right now. It's pretty insane. Oh, my mom's leaving. Bye, mom. Okay, so I just went to my brother's ceremony. He is leaving on a military tour. Um, I'll see if he wants to kind of go into this a little bit more, um, either today or tomorrow, I'm not sure. Leaving St. Paul, my feet are drenched, like drenched. And um, my nice leather ballet flats from J. Crew are probably ruined, so that kind of sucks. But anyway, I need to like dry off my eye. Um, cause yeah, it's like torrential out there. It's gross. And we're in like a tornado warning or something right now too. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Like this is from just like a few yards away, like just walking. Yeah. It's bad. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say hi to the vlog. Hello. Um, but anyway, we're going to go over to my mom and dad's place now. My dad and brother left together. My mom and I left together cause we kind of parked in the same lot. And um, it looks it looks like I'm crying because my makeup is like, <laughs> but anyway, um, I will probably whip out my camera when we get over there. Um, if not, I'm not sure. But anyway, this weekend is like a weekend of goodbyes. My parents are leaving on Saturday, and my brother is leaving for Texas on Sunday. But then he's in Texas for. I think a little bit more than a month and then he is off to Kuwait and then from Kuwait he is going to his like station of where he is actually going um, for his military tour so anyway all right I am gonna stop talking now and I will show you guys some more in just a little bit so apparently Phil is gonna talk to you guys about his deployment and situation he's currently getting up all right so Phil has agreed to a partial interview however I'm just sitting over here like this. Let me finish sending this. This is like first. this is like vloggy style. So anyway, yes, he needs to send a very important text apparently. And then favorite mother is over here too. Hey. You'll probably see her more tomorrow cuz we're going to say goodbye to everybody in this vlog. But uh the dad's on the phone. Thank God. So let's interview Phil. So this is my brother Phil, and he is leaving on a deployment. Would you like to tell everybody anything about your deployment? So I'm in the Minnesota National Guard. We're gonna go to Kuwait in a couple weeks, and we'll be part of something called Operation Spartan Shield. And it's kind of just keeping tabs on the area and helping set up and controlling some little exercises going on in the Middle East and just making a positive, safe presence in those countries is what we're going to be doing. I'll be gone for approximately, I don't know, a little under a year. Uh, I'll be back summertime. sometime next summer, summer 2019. So the vlog won't see you until summer 2019. Nope. Nope. No, no, sure no, man. They're gonna be missing out on the favorite bro. So, what are you looking forward to the most about your deployment? Ooh, well, <clears throat> I think the thing I'm looking forward to the most, honestly, is that I have no idea what I'm even doing, which is great. It's like a choose your own adventure. It's kind of exciting just like going off into the Wild West and going there and figuring it all out and then trying to make the most of of my time over there. So I have some ideas of what I'm doing, though I'm not gonna share them. Um, but I think it'll be a really interesting mission for me and my team, uh, as opposed to some of the other deployments that I've done. This will be completely different. So looking forward to that. I know a lot of people are gonna ask this, but are you gonna be like on the front lines? Are you gonna be sitting at a desk? Like, so can you give be... like some just general, like what you're gonna... Yeah that kind of stuff so like i've i've deployed to uh, iraq twice before and i was like artillery and infantry in both of those this will be totally different because i'm in a division headquarters so we're going to be like managing large battle space areas like in the entire region essentially we're going to be like having our specific role for what we do in that in like several countries, um, about what, 15 different countries, 20 different countries in the region. Um, we're not gonna be driving Humvees and flying helicopters and doing all kinds of cool stuff. We're gonna be like 
making reports and just keeping tabs on what's going on in the world in that region. Um, yeah. It's mother. Do you have any questions for your favorite son? Are you gonna miss your mama? No, I'm not gonna miss my mama. Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> that, um, that's how he got the favorite bro status. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna miss everybody, you know. Uh, it's it's weird that I don't get too like emotional about going over there. The way I see it is I'm going over there to work, you know. And especially the last couple of years, I work in different states where I don't see people for a long time. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I know that I'll still be able to communicate with people on the phone and I'll still have social media access and all that. Obviously, I'm not going to be saying what I'm doing every day, but you know, we can still keep in contact. You, you know? can still take pictures of your coffee. Yeah. And put them on Instagram. I thought you were say something else there. Wow. Anyway. Really? <laughs> really? Uh, you're nasty, Philly. Just, you're nasty. You know, it's not like back in the day where you're writing letters and hoping that your girlfriend responds back and you hear back from them three weeks later that they started dating a new guy and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Just like, or, you know, letters never get to you because you're always on the move and, you know, it's just, it's not like that anymore. Like, it's, I could probably, like, obviously there's a time difference of about eight or nine hours. But, I mean, I could I could go to a call center or even use, I have an international plan on my phone now where, you know, I could, I could call or text right there from my cell phone back to the States, um, no problem, to mm -hmm. still be able to communicate. So, I'm not going to be doing as much communicating, obviously, but we'll still keep in contact for sure. Mm -hmm. I see your little, like, doodad thing on the middle of your chest that's got, like, the little triangles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that thing. Tell me what that is and what it means. The, this rank is Staff Sergeant. Which okay. Which means that, that I've been in a while. I've been in more than 10 years now. You get, like, normally once you're a sergeant, you normally have some soldiers that you're responsible for and all that, and then you just keep going up in rank from there. Man, like if you put it into civilian terms, it's like a mid-level manager, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it all it also depends on what your job is, where you're at. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a chance that a staff sergeant could be in charge of a whole combat convoy out there. You know, it just depends on what you're doing. Or you could be the lowest ranking person as a staff sergeant sitting in some meeting, which I've been there many times where I am all kinds of super high ranking people and I'm the low guy on the totem pole. Got it. Even though, you know they say the term low guy on the totem pole and people think like you're the lowest, most insignificant one, mm -hmm. but the bottom person on the totem pole is actually the most important. Yes. We place. learned that in Alaska. It's the strongest person, yes. the one on yes. the It is the, the, it's the one base. that supports everybody yes. else. Above the thing that says U.S. Army, there's some. There's mm. two patches. What do those mean? This one right here yeah. is my air assault wings, which means that I've been to an air assault school. Uh, there's a bunch around the country, and there's a couple other um, in other places in the world. Um, it's a two-week class where you learn all about helicopter operations, how to rig different equipment up so that it gets picked up by a, a Chinook helicopter or a Black Hawk helicopter, and you just do everything the right way and you get tested on it. You get tested on the specifications of a bunch of different helicopters. You have to do an obstacle course. You have to do um, a PT test. You have to do um, some ruck marches where you have a bunch of weight on your back that's timed event. Um, did I say obstacle course? Pretty sure I yeah, I think you did. Um, and then at the end of it, you do a bunch of like different, you learn a bunch of different repels. You learn how to like tie different knots and stuff. And then you get, get to actually repel out of a Black Hawk helicopter, um, depending on your class. You might get to do it a couple times. And then you graduate, and you get this cool little badge here called the Air Assault Badge. Just tell me about the other it. badge. So this is the Air Assault Badge. The other one is called the Combat Action Badge, which means like, if so, if you're infantry and you get in an actual firefight or get blown up by an IED or you get a mortar round explodes near you or you get injured somehow something like that um, 
you get awarded a combat infantry badge. Mm -hmm. and that was only for people that had the job title of infantry. And then when Iraq and Afghanistan kicked off, they came up with this combat action badge so that people that weren't infantry that were in the shit dealing with, you know, getting shot at and blown up and all that, they wanted some kind of badge that said, hey, I've actually not only been to combat and got a combat patch, but I've actually done something, at least. Yeah. Just to, you know, put on their uniform, whatever. So, so you weren't you weren't injured, you just were. No. You so if you were get, just in the arena with yes. with firefights going on. Yes. You if you actually get injured, you get something called a purple heart. Okay. Meaning like you got, you know, seriously injured or even just slightly injured. Like if you get, you know, nicked by a bullet or you're, you know, running away from mortars and you trip and fall and break your ankle or twist your ankle, or whatever. I mean, technically, you could still get a Purple Heart from that, you know, and also people that actually get killed, they also get a Purple Heart awarded with, you know, other other things, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's what the Combat Action Badge is. I don't remember exactly when I earned it. Yeah, so that's those two badges right there. Um, what else I got? Here's my Red Bull patch. Which Does it give okay? Here's another question. You got a Red Bull patch, but does it give you wings? No, it doesn't. It is Dang not. it! It's two totally different things. <laughs> so, the Red Bull, the patch itself is actually supposed to be a black bucket with a Red Bull oh. painted, Red Bull's yes. skull painted on it. But in this uniform, it's actually subdued, so it's green and not red. On mm -hmm. the dress uniform, if you were, yeah. it would actually be red. Uh, red Bulls have been around since, I believe, World War One, definitely World War II. Um, they have pretty deep history, if you look it up, 34th Infantry Division. Um, if look at their Wikipedia page, all the stuff that they did in North Africa, Italy, things like that, um, back in World War II. It's pretty, pretty cool that their lineage is still going. And now this side. <clears throat> Gotta get the other arm out. Got the old American flag. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice that it's, you might notice that it's backwards. You it could is. Say, right? Because the stars and stripes are always moving forwards whenever it's just depicted anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So as you're walking forward, you want the stars to be moving forward. That's why it's reversed because it's on the right arm. Oh. Okay. If it was on the left arm, then it would be a the other normal way. flag. Yes. Okay, so a little less than that. Um, and then here's my 101st patch. It's on this arm because it's a combat patch, meaning that you have to actually deploy and get that. I was with the 101st from 2004 to 2009, um, did two deployments to Iraq with them. So this patch will always be on here, no matter who I serve with in the military. I had a lot of uh, good memories and good times with them. So, mm -hmm. so this is basically like your history, yep. and this is your current. And this is my current unit. Oh, okay, yes. got it. Yep. Is there a reason? I mean, because I don't know anything about military uniforms, but is there a reason why the U.S. flag is on that arm versus that arm? You know, I'm not sure. It's just it's just always on the right shoulder. Oh, okay. I mean, that's just. It's just the standard. You can't pick and choose what you do. Got it. Um, you know, it just, it is what it is. So same, say you hadn't served dress. before and yeah. you were never in the airborne, would that uh, U.S. flag still be on that arm? Yes. And then you you're... just have, so people that haven't been to combat, they yep. would just have the U.S. flag. Okay. Then just nothing there on this Velcro thing. It sure. Be clean. Okay. With nothing on it. Cool. So... After a couple months in country, normally the guys will, like if they're deploying for the first time with the Red Bulls, they'll have another one of these just on this side. Saying, okay. I've served in combat, mm -hmm. normally for like a month or more, mm -hmm. and then I'm also currently in this unit. Got it. Yeah. Is, I have a question. Yeah. Is there, is there something that you expect the Minnesota National Guard, the Red Bulls, to earn? when they are deployed this time? 
so yeah units can actually so like i don't have my dress uniform on that's where i've got like all the little doodads like the and medals and i would guess like when you deploy you normally earn like you know a bronze star silver star um, army commendation medal army achievement medal you know one of those depending on if you're doing really good stuff over there or you know whatever there's also other awards you can earn by you know getting injured and things like that um you're answering your question units can also earn awards as opposed to the individual like the uh, presidential unit citation notorious unit citation things like that um i think on both my previous deployments my units earned I think the presidential, so that's the blue one. So like on my dress uniform, I've got two on the on this side instead of this side. I should do another video on my dress uniform. Ooh. And different and like, about that. I don't know, eight, nine months? Whenever you come back, there you I go. I like this was supposed to be a video about my upcoming deployment and it's became a video about just the uniform itself. We're concerned, we're concerned with fashion. Yeah, exactly. Women <laughs> only care about clothes. They don't care about the deployment. They want to know, who, well, hey, who I are you wearing? Who are you wearing? U.S. government <laughs> issued. Explain <laughs> the design. Hey, I asked you about the deployment at first, but I got distracted with all the like things on it. You know, it's, it's like ooh, it's interesting stuff, but particularly about the flag. I never knew that either. Yeah. 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 Well, and I didn't know what all that stuff meant because I've never, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know what any of that stuff means. So, like, the cool thing about uniforms, though, is uh, you can tell just by browsing them. You can tell what rank they are, you can tell what name they are, you can tell what military branch they're in, whether it's U.S. Army, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, whatever. It'll tell you exactly what it Don't is. Don't forget about the Space Force. Space Force? Which, I'm looking into joining the Space Force. People are going to think you're serious, Phil. Don't say those types of things. I want to go to Mars <laughs> and possibly... Don't say it! <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> He wants to. He no, wants no, to say. He wants to say Uranus. <laughs> it possibly Uranus. <laughs> so you can tell a lot about people, like rank, name, what branch they're in, what they've done, what they've done. Like, oh, you've been to this school or that school, or hey, you've not only gone to combat, mm -hmm. right, the combat patch with this unit. So you can ask each other, like, hey, you were in the hundred first. I was in the hundred first. Let's do a chest bump. And then we'll talk about <laughs> what years that you were actually there. There you go. And maybe we were in the same brigade or in the same area. Or, hey, maybe mm -hmm. you know somebody that I know because we were in about... Ooh, the same I have time. questions about that. All right, hang on a second. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, you can also know, like, hey, they got a combat action badge or a, a combat infantry badge or whatever. So maybe they, like have actually done some cool stuff and maybe they got some interesting stories to tell. And then you can also tell what unit that they're currently in. I mean, that's like wearing a resume on your shirt, right? True. Um, if you know what the stuff means. Even more so with the dress uniform because that's got all this plus all kinds of extra awards and things like, dang, you've been to that school or you went to Antarctica or you were a prisoner of war like you can like if you know See what those everything. little badges mean yeah. you'll you'll know kind of some of their history and you can like ask them about it so anyway cool what else did you have did oh. you want to hear about the space force again no i i don't really want to hear anything about the space force unless okay. it's like becomes a reality question about like the airborne patch so when you see somebody and you're like, oh, you've been there, and like you were talking about like, hey, we could like chest bump and like hang out or whatever. Yeah. Do you feel like more camaraderie with somebody that maybe you don't know, but maybe was in like the same unit or a similar unit or something like that? Does that make sense? <clears throat> yeah. Um, a lot of times when I see other soldiers or maybe meet them for the first time, I'll be like, oh, hey, you were in the 101st. I, sometimes I might ask them, like, when were you in, what brigade were you in, because, like, the 101st, right now they only have three brigades, but they used to have four brigades, and they, like, are, each one of the brigades are, like, rivals, I guess. So it's like, hey, are you in third brigade? Mm -hmm. And they're like, no. Is it like I the Bloods like, and the Crips? 
kind of. I mean, oh. we're all on the same team, obviously, but we are like <laughs> rivals, right? So I was in third brigade, the Rock Sons, best brigade. Um, clearly. Clearly, <laughs> obviously. I mean, Google it. Just show him. <laughs> Rock Sons. Um, yeah. Put so you find out. out. You find out like what brigade they're in. You know, it just. It's something that you can talk to them about, but like, also you can see other people's patches and be like, dang, what patch is that? Like, what, what is that? They're like, oh, this is the Utah National Guard, or this is the, I was in the whatever, some random unit in Europe that you don't even know what the patch is, and you can talk to them about that specific patch or whatever. Um, you know, or you just see a different patch, and you're like, oh. That's the 1st Cavalry Division patch, so I know that these people, this person was probably stationed at Fort Hood, or that's this specific patch, so I know that they were stationed in Germany, or Korea, or whatever. You can kind of know where some of their history just for looking at what their patch is, especially if it's like an active duty patch. Got it. I don't think I have any more questions. I have a comment. Uh, oh gosh. Comments so from this Mother. Is about, this is about Space Force and the <laughs> possibility of going to Uranus. And Philip, I don't think you're ever going to go because earlier today... <laughs> She's crushing your dreams. <laughs> you said that when you took your ASFAB test, you scored really high, but not high enough to be an astronaut. Whoa. Uh -oh. So you are not... You can retake, retest, 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 <laughs> retest. Hang on. <laughs> now, this was pre-Space Force days. <laughs> it was. Back when... They were, you weren't motivated there enough. There were a very select few of astronauts, and there's astronauts, like ones <laughs> in charge of like, you know, making sure that the space shuttle goes up properly and you know actually goes to the international space uh, international space station, you know, does all that stuff. Those are astronauts, right? You also need people in the space force that are gonna protect the gonna space have some plasma rifles and go blast some <laughs> bug ass to protect your anus so you don't have a bunch of bugs on your anus I mean isn't that like Ghostbusters or something well except they're in low gravity in your anus well not in your anus <laughs> on your anus <laughs> not only on your anus the surrounding moons as well oh wow <laughs> That is classy, classy stuff. Um, Phil, I love you and I trust that you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about you. I really don't. I, I'll be honest. I was worried about my previous first two deployments, like what's actually going to happen there. But I am not worried about this one at all. Um, yeah. Not to jinx it or anything. I hope like I don't get hit by a comet or anything crazy like that. But that's only in the space force. Well, you know, yeah. But this deployment's going to be very different. I mean, it's it really is. Uh, it's going to be a more workplace environment, I guess. Because like my job is different nowadays. I'm not on the front lines like. Yeah, you were just Small. more like at risk the last I two. Yeah, I was in a smaller like forward unit, you know, with, on a small patrol base with like less than a hundred people. Um, now we're like a huge headquarters. Mm -hmm. Like headquarters units. It's just a different environment, totally. Headquarters are uh, big brained decision maker entities. They're not like go out there and fight people entities they're, that's yeah just not what headquarters units do so it's it's a totally different deployment i mean i've worked at headquarters for a long time i've done exercises with them and i know how they operate and yeah and i'm actually looking forward to doing it for real um after being in the national guard for almost 10 years now mm -hmm. so it'll be, True. it'll be good but anyway i'm very very proud of you mm -hmm. and i'm really proud of all the things that you've accomplished mm -hmm. And I love you very much. Thank you, Mama. And thank you for your service. Oh, how cheesy. How cheesy. She just wanted to get that on video. Yeah, right? She doesn't actually mean that. It's like to prove it was real. She's like, you know what? Just join the Space Force and just go to Uranus. Whatever. <laughs> go, go fight bugs on Uranus. <laughs> and the surrounding moons. And yeah, don't forget those. Woo!
It's all about cleanliness, everybody. <laughs> all right. We'll do another video. How about we do another video when I get back about a year from now? Yeah. And then your followers can ask other questions. All the questions yeah. that and you are willing I, to answer. Yeah. I can't say everything, obviously. Well, clearly. I'm in trouble. Well, and but, it's, you know. it's kind of like when I do Q&As. I'm able to say the things that I am comfortable saying, and I'm also able to edit out or not say the things that are just clearly TMI or just something I'm not comfortable chatting about. No. So you kind of pick and choose. Well, we're gonna go. There's the favorite mama and the favorite bro, and I'm still the favorite daughter. He's still the favorite <laughs> son for now, unless he joins the Space Force. <laughs> My dad's on the phone. But we're gonna go for now, so goodbye. I might vlog a little tomorrow, I'm not really sure, but it's like the weekend of bye-byes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're all leaving. I yeah. know, it's just like- I'm going to Uranus, mom and dad are going to- We're going to New Orleans. They're going to Vegas. They're go no, no, they're going to New Orleans. They're going to New Orleans. They're going to New Orleans. New Orleans. And then we're, then we're heading home. Yep. And not here. They're heading back oh, to Florida. South. Yes. Yes. People might be confused. The South home. Yes, yep. exactly. <laughs> so it'll be just me and Doyle. So the vlogs will not be as entertaining, but that's all right. So anyway, if I don't see you tomorrow, goodbye. If I do see you tomorrow, stay tuned. So goodbye from all of us. Bye-bye. Stay safe, Bye. Philly. And uh, I'll give you guys updates on the internet when I can. Bye. 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 Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> yeah.